A little recap. Nikon challenged me to make a short film with their Z6 camera. No lighting equipment or tripods or anything, just the camera, recorder and sound kit. In the last video we went through the short film's pre-production and the first day of filming, and so now it's time for day two of filming, as well as the editing and colour grading. Here's what happened. So we arrived for our second and final day of filming, and the first task is setting up the kitchen to match the photos we took on the previous day. Now with this project I'm making a conscious effort to delegate and collaborate, and this is what that looks like. Mari, the first AD, has my shot list, and so we're talking about which shot we're filming next and whether to cut or add certain shots for each scene. Plus, she's familiar enough with the overall shoot to be able to answer lots of the crew's questions. See, I've realised that you spend a lot of time as a director answering questions anyway, so any help is definitely welcome so I can focus my time and energy on answering the actors' questions instead. For example, since the beginning of the shoot, I've hardly spoken to Jamie, our clapper because he always goes to Mari to ask her which shot is next, and by the time we're ready to roll, he's right there with the slate and ready. Tomas, our sound recordist, has fantastic attention to detail, not only ensuring that the current shot sounds good, but also checking each line of dialogue from the script, and getting the actors to reread their lines where necessary, as well as picking up wild track sound effects and room tone. Andrea is our production assistant, he gets hands on with setup and packing down, as well as exchanging batteries for me and charging the used ones, getting the actors when they need to come to set, and setting out lunch and refreshments, including rushing out to the shops to get some milk when we run out. It may not be the most glamorous job, but it's absolutely vital for a smooth shoot. Then we've got Elliot, our art director in charge of costumes, props, and set dressing. Most of his work is already done by the time we're on set, but during the shoot, he's resetting the food props in between takes and preparing the props for the next shot so that we can move on as quickly as possible. In between, he's keeping a close eye on the details of continuity, although to be honest, we're all doing our best to keep everything where it's supposed to be. So there's not too much more I can say about the second day of filming without running into spoilers, but essentially things get pretty hectic in the second half of the day, we're definitely running out of time but with some janky last minute changes to the shot list, we do manage to finish with just enough time to clear up the location, leaving it as we found it. We wrap and I head home with that familiar feeling of pleased accomplishment mixed with complete fear that I've entirely messed up all of the footage. With that curiosity burning, I send the footage off to Jamie, who's also helping with post-production. He syncs up the audio with the footage while I'm watching through every single take and noting down the best parts. For me, editing is a real balancing act. If the shoot had been flawless, then we could just choose any angle at any moment, but in reality, editing always involves compromises. Sometimes I have to cut to the wider shot because that's got the best dialogue delivery, or we have to cut back to the other character to smoothly hide an issue with one of the takes. And I think the likelihood of these kind of problems arising is much higher when you've got a lot of moving characters and props. And so there are occasions where I have to sacrifice the accuracy of certain details for the sake of the story, or repurpose some footage from a completely different shot to make this edit work. It's a grueling process, but after lots of regret and feedback, re-editing and long hours, I have a rough cut finished. So I export an XML project file to send back to Jamie so he can get started on the sound while I begin colour grading. Now for the first time, I'm working with the Z6's 4K 10-bit N-Log footage recorded with the Atomos Ninja 5, but I pretty much treat it as I would any other footage. I chuck on Film Convert, my colour grading plugin of choice, choose my favourite film stock, drop the contrast down, then I cool off the colour temperature until it feels right, reduce the film colour as well so it's more subtle, bring up the exposure slightly, and then dial back the film grain. From here I head into the main colour tab to add some contrast, paying attention to the scopes so I don't lose detail. This looks too colourful for my short that's supposed to be more realistic than stylized, so I'm going to back off the saturation from the highs and mids more so than the shadows, which is a trick that I learned from recreating the colour of real film stocks. I then crop into just the skin tone, and looking at my scopes that shows me that I need to add just a little bit of green so that it's sitting on that skin tone line. And then that gives me my base grade, which I can then copy over to the next shot and start adjusting for any lighting changes. There are a few cases where even after generally matching the exposure, it still doesn't quite work, usually because the shot is backlit, and so in those cases I use power windows, which pretty straightforwardly brighten the areas that I want to draw attention to, and darken parts where it's possible to balance out the frame. Now something I've only started doing recently is fixing my highlights. 
When you have windows like this that are blown out, I usually find it helps to select those areas with a colour mask and desaturate them. To me this makes the highlights blend much more and gives it a really nice neutral look. I'm really happy with the image I was able to pull from the Z6, especially considering that it's entirely filmed in natural light and quite a lot of it was low light or backlit too. So by now Jamie has the project with the first pass of sound effects sent over to me. So I give him a bunch of feedback, things to add or change, and then I go and write out the credits, double and triple checking everyone's name. When Jamie sends me back the project, I dive into the sounds, tweaking the volumes, applying noise reduction, and adding little details that help tie it all together. Of course, it's important to pan some of the background sounds to come from the left or right, depending on where they happen in the scene. To me, this small effort makes a huge difference in making the story feel real. On a project like this, I think the key with sound is just to put the time in, being willing to painstakingly build layers of soundscape and balance everything out. It really does take a while, but if we hadn't set aside time on set for Tomas to record all of these sounds, Silence, please. then I think it would have taken at least three times as long. And that's the beauty of collaborating. You can take on more complex projects and get them finished more efficiently, and also usually at a higher standard. Although on set I was pretty focused on the task at hand, there was plenty of joking around during the shoot, and I can already feel that I'm starting to romanticise the madness of my post-production schedule where I stayed at home alone for days, eating takeaways and forgetting to shower. As always, this project has challenged me, and at so many points it made me really, really doubt myself. But overall, I think I've learned a ton of important lessons from it. And so finally, I'm ready to share this short film with you. It's called Yes Chef and it will pop up in a second or just check the link in the description. You can also find part one of this behind the scenes in case you missed it. And that's it for this week. I'm going to go and finish my next project but first I think I'm going to have a nice long sleep. See you next week.